Placement of Prophylactic Ureteral Catheter for Pelvic Surgery. Objective. First, we will discuss the literature regarding ureteral injury in prophylactic ureteral catheter placement. Then, we will demonstrate a technique of ureteral catheter insertion. We will review the necessary equipment, equipment assembly, and catheter placement with and without a guide wire. Ureters are smooth muscle fibers that propel urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder. They are approximately 25 to 30 centimeters in length and a mere 3 to 4 millimeters in diameter. The incidence of ureter injury during abdominal and pelvic surgery has been reported to range from 1 to 8 percent. Although uncommon, a ureter injury has the potential for serious complications. Common sites of injury are at the level of the IP ligament, the level of the uterine artery, and the angles of the vagina. During robotic and laparoscopic surgery, there is a loss of the ability to palpate the ureters digitally. Ureteral stents may offset this deficit by improving visibility and rigidity. In the literature, prophylactic ureteral catheters have not been shown to prevent ureteral injury. They are associated with complications such as hematuria, dysuria, urinary tract infection, reduced pliability, and anatomy distortion. Proposed benefits of ureteral catheterization are increased rigidity and palpability for dissection, ability to identify the course of the ureter, and the ability to verify the integrity of the ureter. Ureteral catheter replacement should not be done routinely on every patient, but instead should be on those with suspected distorted anatomy, such as patients with malignancy, endometriosis, pelvic adhesions, anatomical disruptions, radiation therapy, or colorectal disease. Equipment Our cysto table is set up as displayed. We use a 30 degree scope and a 22 French sheath. A polyurethane ureteral catheter that is 6 French and 70 centimeters in length, standard camera and light source, and a sensor straight tip guide wire that is 150 centimeters in length. If there are concerns for a stenotic urethral opening, the cystoscope can be introduced with the aid of an obturator. The obturator protects the urethral tissue from the potentially sharp sheath tip. The obturator is inserted into the sheath as shown and then inserted into the urethra as a unit. Once past the urethra, the obturator is withdrawn and the lens is inserted as shown next. Assembly First slide the 30 degree scope into the 22 French sheath and lock the contraptions together. Then slide the catheter into the rubber nipple to approximately 4 centimeters. Place the nipple on the opening to the operative port. And slide the catheter through the sheath until you visualize the tip to ensure there is no obstruction. Once this is completed, retract the catheter until the tip is shielded fully by the sheath. Hold the cystoscope and the catheter in one hand as shown so that your other hand may properly guide the cystoscope in a controlled manner. Ureter catheter placement. Using one hand, properly expose the urethral opening. Our patient had a cystocele, thus a sponge stick was placed to support the prolapse. The cystoscope is introduced and a complete survey of the bladder is conducted in the normal fashion. Once the ureter orifice is identified, the catheter is slowly advanced. If the catheter's orientation does not line with the opening, rotating the camera may aid in orientation and alignment. If any significant resistance is appreciated, the operator must stop to avoid ureter injury. The single black marks on the catheter represent one centimeter, while the group black marks are multiples of five. This double mark means 10 centimeters of catheter has been inserted into the ureter. At this point, 15 centimeters of catheter has been advanced. Depending on the location and extent of disease, 15 to 20 centimeters of catheter may be advanced. Guide wire use. Some studies in urology advocate the routine use of the guide wire for catheter placement. We primarily use the guide wire when ureteral resistance is expected or encountered. First, the guide wire must be activated by injecting it with 10 cc's of fluid. 
Then the guide wires slowly advanced through the lumen of the catheter. Once the guide wire is visualized on the screen, approximately 4 centimeters of the distal end is directed into the ureteral opening. After the guide wire has been firmly placed, the catheter may slowly be advanced and the guide wire may be removed. In instances of excessive ureter mobility, where the ureter may require straightening, the guide wire may be advanced to the renal pelvis. After the procedure is over, take care in removing the catheters from the cystoscope without unintentionally pulling them from the ureters. And lastly, always remember to secure the proximal ends as to not have them dislodged during the case. Conclusion Ureteral catheterization can be used as a supplement to aid in the identification of the ureters in complex pelvic surgery. They should not be a substitute for meticulous surgical techniques and knowledge of anatomy. Routine placement should be avoided, but instead reserved for those with suspected or encountered distorted anatomy.